Welcome to Haxby Shed. Today for a change we're going to do a bit of computer engineering. At least a repair on my old Dell XPS 430 tower. I bought this new in about 2008 and it's given me good reliable service. I haven't seen any need to change it but I have gradually upgraded it over the years so I put in a faster processor the fastest that the uh, motherboard could take I put in extra memory I improved the graphics card and put in a new graphics card and a few other things just to keep it going nicely and I put in solid state drives so by spending 50 pounds here 100 pounds there over its lifetime um, I've kept it operating really at a good speed and it's just as good as any i5, Intel i5 or similar. But now I've got a problem with the power supply, which I need to uh, fix by replacing with an old second-hand power supply I bought off eBay. So let's look at how we do that. The problem showed itself when the computer would start sometimes and not other times. And the Dell computers have a self-test on the power supply and if there's an internal power fault, the, start, the on and off button will flash amber. But this one actually, when, it, when it's not working, it doesn't even flash amber properly, it just blinks. If I turn it on, you can see, hopefully. Now maybe you can just see that slight amber flash. Now if I did that 10 times, once or twice, it would start properly and it would, um, it would work if I press the button. But anyway, the fault is showing, it's just got that occasional amber blink. Now if it was a slightly different type of fault, the blink would be much more solid, it would be on, off, on, off, but because this is a power supply fault, it's just blink, blink, blink. And I know that the power supply is the fault because I have an old second computer and I took the power supply out of that, rigged it up to this, and then it would start reliably every single time. So let's get the cover off and uh, get started on changing the power supply out. Getting the cover off is dead easy. We pull this knob back at the top and it's done. And we can see the main components of the PC inside. But this is the power supply. And the power supply cables here. And this is my replacement power supply. And it's a genuine Dell. Came out of um, an old computer I'm sure. I paid 10, 25 quid on eBay. I could have bought something new, but these connectors, the various types of connector, so this is the motherboard main connector here, this is the CPU power connector, these are old, old style Molex connectors, and these connectors are the, these type, are the ones that you find on SATA drives, serial ATA drives, and if I was to buy a brand new supply, I'd have to specify exactly which of these connectors I wanted and how many of them. And honestly, you know, it's not worth the trouble when I can buy exactly the same item for 25 quid uh, and just swap it out pin for pin. It's just so much easier. So that's the option I chose. OK, so let's go around the power connectors one by one. Not easy to film, but I'll do my best. So underneath the main motherboard power connector, there's a little clip. If we press that clip, we should be able to pull this off. There we go. OK. And then we've got power to the back of each of the drives. So they just pull straight out. There and there. OK, so they're off. Uh, there's power to drives down in the bottom. I've already taken those off. There's a flying connection here to a USB 3 card that I've got down the bottom there. Uh, there's one more connector at the back here, which is the 
four pin CPU 12 volt power connection. There we go, that, that was the one. It was a bit difficult to get out because it's tucked down inside there. Okay, so we're making progress. These are clear, these are clear. This is off. But there's a loom that runs down the back of the fan, the CPU fan housing. So I've just unscrewed that with two screws. Take that off. Ah, oh, I think I might even vacuum that out. And we can get to this cable here. So I'll disconnect those and come back again after that. Well, after a bit of a fight and struggle, I've got this loom out, which ran right down the back of the case and out between these two disk drives. But we're ready to just now remove the power supply, which can be done, I think, by pressing this button here and also removing some screws on this side panel. I'll come back when I've done that. Yes, there were four screws to remove. Here, here, here and here. And now, we can press this blue button and this drops out. So that's the old power supply out now. I just need to recover this clip. Okay, well this is the replacement power supply with the clip on. And now we need to reverse the process. And we start by clipping the power supply back into the PC. So we'll, uh, we'll have a struggle with this then. Bang, bang, bang. Yes, well, there we go. There, so that's clipped in. Now I need to put the four screws back in. I think everybody knows what four screws look like. But still, you can watch me put the last one in. Okay, so that's the power supply fixed in. Now we need to reverse the process with the cables. So I'll start with these that run down the back and between these two drives. Well, after a bit of a fight, I got the long cable down between these two drives. It was difficult to push it down the back. So this one is a connector for a graphics card which is not in use. Old school graphics card. These two are the power connectors for these two uh, mechanical drives. So they can be pushed on. Here we go. Now let's plug in the main motherboard power 24 pin connector here. That's in. Make sure it's firmly in and clicked into place. Next I'll plug in this CPU power connector but I'll do that off camera because it's a bit of a struggle to get in down at the back there. Okay now we have these four SATA type power connectors for the two CD-ROM drives up here and then two solid state drives just here so those will be the ones I'll plug in next okay there's, those are all in so it just remains for me to connect this old Molex connector to this flying power lead for the USB 3 card I've got down there plug that in and that completes all the connections for the power supply I'll just wind that around there I need to put these cables into this blue clip just to finish that off as well. Okay, so that's all the mechanical and electrical connections complete except one I can see that I haven't put on yet, which I will do now. There we go. That was just the lower CD-ROM drive. I'd missed that one off. Um, so now I need to put the fan cowling and heatsink back onto the CPU. And I'll vacuum that out because, as I showed earlier, it's just so clogged up with dust. But also, you can see the heat sink there and the copper conductors. That's heat conductors. 
and you can see uh, sort of a grey paste on there. Well, that's the heatsink paste, and it makes sure that there's a proper transference of heat between the top of the CPU uh, into the heatsink. Now that goes hard when it gets hot, so I need to replace that. Now my son's got some, so I'll pop round uh, to his house this evening and uh, put, get some paste. But for the time being, I'll just try this out. Um, but I won't finish the job until I've put some fresh heatsink paste on to make sure that the CPU keeps cool. So I've vacuumed out the uh, heatsink fins and I'm just putting the heatsink cowling back on and literally there are two pegs at the back and two screws here. These are spring loaded so that it holds the heatsink plate against the CPU. So I'll finish those and then we'll put the power cable in and hopefully it'll behave itself and uh, the problem will be fixed. Okay, I've been through and checked all the connections and I'm quite happy that everything's in the right place. So now all I need to do is to plug in the power cable, turn on the power and when it starts it should just go woo as the power supply goes through a little self check. Okay so I'm ready to turn the power on and if it's working correctly it should just go through a little self test and go woo like that. Excuse the noise. There we are, so it went orange, then blue, and if I press that button now the computer would start, but I don't want to do that right now. So the power supply was the fault. So later that evening I got the thermal paste from my son, cleaned up the heat sink, and then put the paste onto the top of the processor and assembled it all. So let's have a look at the old power supply, I've just taken the lid off it. Well this is the old supply. Um, absolutely covered in dust inside as you might expect after 12 years I suppose and one of the usual suspects would be one of these power capacitors has gone soft that's um, capacitors are often the the main culprit of power supply failures so I don't have a way of testing them I could just buy them and replace them but I don't know if it's worth the effort, quite honestly, if I can get a supply for £25. Um, I'll have a poke about and see, see what's going on, but likely as not, it's um, not something I can repair. OK, so, job done. Computer back in service. Panic over. Thank you for watching Hagsby Shed.